Cosplay is something that always presents its own set of interesting challenges. As exciting as it is to shoot, it does present something that isn't typically common in other kind of portraits. However, even though it looks completely different to what people might shoot, this is something we can actually fix with the same Unify tool. And there's a lot of commonalities between this and, say, portraits. For example, this image provided by Robert Buchanan is an image shot for Cassandra Cosplays. And what I like about this is the whole theme here is going to be green skin. And you can see she's wearing green tights here on her legs, but the hands are a different color. And so we could use Unify to make sure that they are perfect. And before we begin actually modifying the colors, we have to first make sure that the luminosity or brightness of the hand is the same as the leg. Because fixing colors and making sure things are even, it requires two components. The legs and the hands being similar must have the same luminosity value. How do we do that? Well, Dodge and Burn will help us get there. If any of you already are familiar with Dodge and Burn, this won't be new to you. Um, and if any of you are not familiar with Infinite Unify, make sure you go to infinite-tools.com and under the Infinite Unify section, you'll be able to see all the videos necessary, whether it's cosplay, whether it's portraits or fixing beverages, and an overview video that goes over all these tools and settings so that you don't have to worry about that just yet. Okay, so aside from that, I'm going to go and set up a dodge and burn action. And this is something that I use in my um, retouching series class. If you're not familiar with that, I'll also link that in the description of this video. But basically, no matter how you dodge and burn or how you darken and lighten, you just want to use this to kind of identify in black and white what is going on here. So number one, you'll notice that the hand over here is a little bit brighter than the leg. And the same thing for this hand here. And so what we will go ahead and do and just do it by eye. We don't have to be 100% precise because we don't need that. This is, this is very, very rudimentary. I'm going to go ahead and darken the hand here as well as the hand here. And then kind of maybe the face if we want to by adding um, a burn and dodge. And we're going to use the burn primarily. If you're not familiar with that, basically this is just a curve adjustment layer. And you'll see the curve itself brought down and it has a black mask on it. And this black mask is obviously not showing anything at the moment because we haven't brushed on it yet. So I'm going to switch over to my brush tool. My opacity is going to be 100%. My flow, I'm going to bring it down to around 3%. Or I can simply hit um, Shift-03 on my keyboard. Or if you have this icon selected, you can use just 0, 3. And then automatically it goes to 3%. Again, it's 0, 3 and not just 3 because that becomes 30%. Okay, my flow is set to 3%, opacity at 100, and my brush hardness will be set to 0. And then we can go over here, and I'm just going to go ahead and brush in the hand till it gets relatively similar to the pants, I think, the leggings. And I just want to get it very, very general. It doesn't have to be precise, as you notice. It's not, not complete rocket science, I think. It's hopefully relatively easy. And I'm just going to be brushing in. I'm changing my brush size using brackets on my keyboard. Or if you have your shortcuts changed, just simply change that up. So there we go. I think that looks a lot better. We can always come back after we apply the colors as well, so you don't have to worry too much about that. I'm also going to darken down some of the face as well, because it will respond to color a lot better. You'll notice that color by itself is great. However, it does require a brightness component to match. Okay, I think that looks pretty good. Let's turn this on and off. It's kind of where we want to be right now. And I think as long as this leg matches the, the arm here, or the hand matches the leg here, it should be good. Okay, next we are going to turn off this black and white adjustment layer here. I'm going to go over and kind of hide this for a second, because now we're going to go to the fun part. And that's going to be making this hand the same tone of green as the leg because you can see it's like green and all kinds of weird colors going on here because when you darken it down it kind of exposes the flaws of the makeup okay so we don't have to worry about any of that this is going to be really really cool i'm excited to show you because i think it's going to be hopefully pretty accurate i'm going to go ahead and make a select my lasso tool here for a second then i'm going to go and select and highlight uh, a range of colors that i like which is pretty much uniform i'm just going to go ahead and 
select something that goes from the shadows here to kind of the midtones. I think that should be good enough. And I'll make sure that my blending mode here is set to C, which is going to be color. Then I'll make sure this is on and that is going to be my black mask. So I'll click create. And suddenly that's good to go. And don't worry about that message. It does come up from time to time. That's just my Photoshop. <laughs> and I'll click on my black mask here. I'll click on my regular brush tool. And I think I'm just going to go ahead and bring it to 100 for a second here. Uh, and my opacity here, I'll keep it to 50, 5, 0, enter for my layer itself because I don't want to bring it to 100 just yet. That might be too strong. I'll go ahead and brush this in like this. So you can see it's coming in and it's matching up with the rest of the outfit, which is pretty, pretty cool. Zoom out here to keep relativity. And I'll show you something in just a second once it's already applied to make life way easy for you. Let's say we go ahead and apply this and you know I brush it in and it looks really nice. I've changed my flow. The closer I get to really delicate areas, I brought my flow down to say 10% just to kind of gently bring it in so it's not too too fast as I'm getting close to the edges. Hopefully you can see my cursor here. So there you go. Um, I've gone ahead and kind of painted everywhere that I've wanted to. Let's turn this on and off for a second. You can see that it kind of matches up really, really nicely. Some things that might happen is maybe the colors might not be perfect. Maybe the gradient map is good, but not, you know, 100% perfect. What can we do? Well, there's a little slider here called hue. And the hue slider, if I, if I drag it to the left, it changes the how what shade of green it is, for example, in this case. And you can really match it up perfectly in case it's not identical to what you want to be. Sometimes this comes in handy if maybe the hand might be in shadows or does it has a different kind of cast that doesn't match what you expected. Um, so I think I'm just going to zoom out here and identify the colors zoomed out. And for me, I think, you know, bringing it to the left a little, adding a little bit more warmth looks really nice. I think that looks great. Another thing that we can also do is maybe if the hand is too saturated, what we can also do is add a hue and saturation adjustment layer. And then if I only want to, say, reduce the saturation to that part of the photograph, I could reduce the saturation here, hold Option, and then hover in between these two layers. So you have this little arrow, and then I'm going to click on it. And if you do it correctly, what you'll notice is that the layers itself now, the layer itself now has an arrow pointing down to Infinite Unify. And whatever I do on this layer here, will now only impact the infinite unify layer. So it kind of like adding a separate layer altogether without making a mask and doing it all over again. So that's really, really handy. Now I can adjust how saturated that area is as well. So that's kind of handy. I think that looks really good. And then if I want to, I can continue painting across the rest of the image. If I want to go ahead and paint on the hand, I can do so. And I think this is great because it gives me the option to now, once it's set up to continue with the rest of the skin, and you'll notice that it's also correcting what I thought was a pretty good color to begin with. And it goes across and does the rest. And I can reduce opacity if I want to in case I want it to be really gently coming in. It doesn't have to be 100% all the time. And I can go ahead and paint the rest of the face. So you can see here, it, it does a lot of the work for you. And it's really nice because it also figures out the different colors in the midtones and highlights and shadows without you really doing much at all. And let me just zoom out here and fix the rest. And I don't really have a need to go all the way, but I'm compelled to do it just to show you how cool and easy it could look once it's done. And there we go. You can see the difference. This is the before and this is the after. And you again, because we have this all on independent layers, if you decide that, you know what, nah, I don't like the burn, I want to bring it down, I could do that, maybe just revisiting it, because once the colors are set up, I can then go in and say, let's tone the forehead down. So I can change my flow down, use a brush set to black, and then click on my burn mask, and then just simply brush over any part that you might not want to um, have. So there you go. That's perfect. I think that looks really, really nice compared to where we started with. 
I hope you guys actually enjoyed this tutorial. Again, um, if you want to learn anything about this, simply go to infinite-tools.com, visit the Infinite Unify section, and you can see a video that goes over everything as well as other tutorials that demonstrate all kinds of scenarios. And you can also find the links in the description to this video too, in case you forgot all of that.